I was the one who first introduced bat houses in America back in about 1982. And since then, we've learned an awful lot about what bats like, what they need, and how they can help people. Troy here is providing a perfect opportunity for a bat scientist to test bat houses. My name is Troy Swift, and I'm a, I'm a commercial pecan grower in Central Texas. In the pecan business, there are specific pests that we need to control, and uh, some of those are moths. Merlin suggested, well, if you have this pest problem, perhaps you should consider bat houses. Having known about Merlin, I said, what better opportunity than to have a scientist of his caliber help me establish a bat population in the orchard. I was absolutely delighted to meet Troy because he has his own sawmill, provides outstanding lumber for bat houses. He has his own orchards where we can test them, his machinery for establishing the bat houses in exactly the right places. It's a perfect opportunity. Then he came up here and saw this pecky cypress, and pecky cypress means that it has these naturally occurring slots in it, which makes it rough and according to Merlin, very attractive to bats, uh, easy for them to hold on to and land on. That evolved into an experiment where we are putting up 16 bat houses, eight of each of these two designs, and then beyond that, half of these boxes will be painted a color very similar to this color you have here, and the other half will be left natural. So we're testing not only locations in the orchard, but bat house design and bat house finishes. Where we want to go with this is we want to prove what insects these bats are preying upon. We're now using a billion pounds of pesticides annually in America. It's obvious that we can't just keep using more and more pesticides to control pests. Use of natural controls for insects has multiple values to me. One is purely economic. The other side is when you spray non-selective in insecticides, you're killing beneficial insects and even affecting the animals that feed on them. And then the third reason I want to do this is we want to produce a highly nutritious natural product. People are more concerned about where their food is uh, grown, how it's grown, so it could turn out to be in addition to doing the right thing in the orchard and the right thing for bats and science and agriculture, it could also be a good business opportunity for us. This is very difficult research to conduct accurately, and that's why it hasn't been more of it done. Now we have an opportunity we've never had until just very recently. We can use a type of system called barcoding where we look genetically at the droppings of the bats underneath their roost and we can identify for the first time exactly what species the bat ate. So now we don't just say, yeah, they ate a lot of moths or they ate a lot of beetles. We know which moths or which beetles they ate. And it's possible that one kind of bat will like this house better than this one, and another may prefer this one. But in the end, if one of them turns out to be consuming more pests than the other, we might use the kind of house that attracts the species that consumes the most pests of the ones we're trying to get rid of. The science aspect of this project is very interesting to me. My previous career was in the jet engine business and, and I was trained in statistics. So incorporating the science into this project is not just interesting to me, but if we do it right, we can actually prove some concepts that can be used in the future.